So, welcome again to one of Trivi's tutorials. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take a dive into an aspect of Photoshop called Lab Mode, um, which is not an easily understood uh, place to be. It's a colour space rather than a colour profile, and it's quite useful uh, for doing colour corrections and things like that. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this image. Now this image I'm going to turn into a smart object. Good smart object and I'm going to open it up by double clicking on it and that gives us a, a new Photoshop file. Um, and then I'm going to convert that into lab mode. And this used to be an old party trick of mine I used to do in my design days in London um, about 20 years ago. So if you press uh, Command 4, then Command I, and then Command 2, uh, your image changes colour. So let me just demonstrate that. Save this smart object and close it by pressing Command W. And you can see what's happened here. The colour has just changed. Magic. <laughs> okay, so what's happened there then? Well, let's go back into our smart object and take a look. So what really happened is I used these uh, shortcut keys to, to select a channel. So if I press Command 4, it selects the A channel and then I press command I which inverted the channel okay so now if, what, if we look we go back to our original image so what's going on there well let's open up the curves and I'll show you so in lab mode your lightness channel and your A and B channels show up in your curve um, drop down window here. Now the lightness channel works the same way as in RGB, i.e. you can just kind of adjust it and it adjusts lightness and contrast of your um, highlights and shadows. Okay, but the A and B channels, they work slightly differently. Um, in the A and B channels, your 50% grey area, 50% grey, that equals zero colour and anything above is one colour and anything below is another colour. Now, at the moment, I'm, I'm, to, work, to make it easy to work with, I'm going to go into our Curves Display options and I'm going to change from Light into Pigment Ink. Okay, so that swaps things around a bit. But what this means is now, if I, if I put a point there, 50%, this, this is what I mean. It shows you that 50% and 50% equals zero color and green area is up there so if we if we drop the green area down to 50% it would disappear so you've got no more green in your channel in your A channel and the red and we could do a similar thing with the red so if we if we took the red up to 50% as well that would disappear okay and that leaves us with yellow. And the reason why it leaves us with yellow is because yellow exists in the B channel. So if we were to flatten out this curve as well, yellow and blue exist in the B channel, we'd get a black and white image. So 50% grey equals no colour. So the way that you use your curves in the A and B channels, you use them like a dial rather than um, <coughs> sorry, rather than a normal curve as you would use in in RGB color. So that is what you would do is you you slide your you keep your curves straight and you just slide them around and move them in between making sure that your center point the, the curve always goes through the center point is 50% because then you won't introduce color casts. Okay, and you can do that by making sure that the input values kind of add up to 100. So you can make that one 60, and then this one 40. Those add up to 100, and then you can be guaranteed that your 
uh, curve goes directly through the center. Okay, now, so, so basically what you're doing is you're increasing the increasing color con contrast. Okay, so, but if you wanted to actually change color, and the, the thing that I did there was I inverted the color. So I turned the dial around 180 degrees, and that's how you get this kind of inversion of color. Okay, so that's what's happening there. And that can be really useful. Um, yeah, so there you go. And let me, I suppose I can just show you another one. Let's say if we wanted to turn this um, this particular one to blue, but we wanted to keep the, the other ones a similar color, uh, we can do that too. I'll just show you how to do that. Let's just close this down. Oh, uh, yeah, so this one. So this is one I've made earlier. So we've got the the yellow car is just turning blue. Okay, so let's open up the smart object and see what's happened. And the, essentially this is what happened. So what we've done here is I've inverted the B channel instead. Okay, uh, but I've done an extra little thing, which let's just pull these out a bit here. I've got a, a, a blending a layer blending uh, effect going on here. Okay, so let's get rid of this mask. Back to our layers. Oops, bring our channels back. So, if you click on that, you get this layer style thing, <coughs> and you can see these things here. So you choose a channel, and you can blend uh, between channels using this thing. So if we if we set this back to the way that it was to to how it started, okay. So by inverting, let me just show you. So by inverting the the B channel, uh, Command I, that's kind of how you get this this kind of colour going on, so the, the yellows have turned to blue. Um, with our yellows converted to blue, I then bring back the red using these sliders, and the way these sliders work is you kind of, you pull them back to where your colour comes back in, and then just to make it a bit smoother, you can press the Alt key to divide that up, and it gives a, a smoother blend. And then for the other, oh no. I think it was these ones, was it? Yeah, so, oops, no. Yeah, so taking away the green, yes, yeah, so bringing back the green, sorry. I use this slider. And maybe this one as well. And that gets most of the green coming back and leaves our middle car blue. Okay, and then it's just a question of painting out the bits that don't work with a mask. Okay, so there's so that's what you do. And there you go. So this is a, just a, and then when you save the file and close it again, you go back into your RB, RGB Photoshop file, and you've got a selection of colors to show your art director work that you've been doing. And it's just a quick way of, um, of changing the color of stuff without having to mess around with drawing masks and things like that. So there are other tutorials on YouTube these days. There weren't any 20 years ago, but there are now. So if you're interested in it, you can go and look, look at those. But I just thought I'd give you a brief overview of the esoteric world of lab mode in Photoshop and uh, see if you can find any useful ways of using it.